Job 8 today. Job is going to have a long discourse back and forth with three or four of his friends. And once again, they're, they're friends. You could probably label them as pseudo friends. But in the end, they kind of came through and, you know, they, they tried their very best to kind of make amends for what they did. You know, that's just the way it is with friends. You know, sometimes they, they, they betray you, you know. Uh, it's just the way it is, like families, kids betraying their parents. It happens, and sometimes it comes around, and, and sometimes it's like uh, it just never is the same again because of rebellion against God and the authority of their father and their parents. Job did none of those things. He was not involved in uh, rebellions, warring against God, causing uh, insurrection, dissension. God is putting him through the fire as an example to the angels, to Satan, to Job, to the people of God for centuries to come. And right now, we're going to talk about the example that Job set for all of us. One of his friends today, today is uh, Bill Dad's time. Job has been kind of speaking and defending himself. And, and you've been in that place, you know, having to, you know, people make accusations. Sometimes, you know, frequently it's a false accusation or a, something you said and they twist it slightly. And you, it's kind of hard to defend yourself or something you did and they twist it slightly. You know, and and you're trying to defend yourself. Sometimes it's best to not even defend yourself. Just let them run and crow at the moon, right? Because they're not going to change their opinion. Then answered Bildad the Shuhite and said, How long wilt thou speak these things, and how long shall the words of thy mouth be like a strong wind? Obviously, uh, Bildad is not very sympathetic to Job. So in Job chapter 8, um, this is all going to be pretty much negative. Some of it sounds good. That's kind of like the heretics and the pseudo churches. Some of the things they say sound good, you know, and, and there's even truth mixed with it. It's kind of like um, a true prophecy in the church. And then somebody else comes up and gives a prophecy and it sounds like the last one, but there's a a little bit of a twist in there that would seem to take the glory away from God and put the glory on man. And so this is Bildad's kind of false prophecy. Job has kind of been speaking the right things. He's been speaking good words. But here comes, you're in a Pentecostal church or a spirit-filled Methodist church or whatever, and somebody gives a word of prophecy, and it's a good one, and it it uh, kind of gives some direction to the to the preacher and the um, the elders and the people. And okay, we kind of see where we're going, and here comes somebody else popping up. But there's this, there's there's this twisted. It's like a false prophecy. And this is Bildad, whether he's meaning to do this, or he's. He's, he's kind of oppressed right now. We don't really know. But he's saying words that don't really apply to the situation. Doth God pervert just judgment or justice? Or doth the Almighty pervert justice or judgment? Does God pervert it? In other words, he's kind of saying... Bad things only happen to bad people. Verse 4, that's what Bill Dad is saying. If thy children have sinned against him, and he hath cast them away for their transgression, if thou wouldest seek unto God be times, or before times, and make thy supplication to the Almighty, if thou wert pure and upright, surely now he would awake for thee and make the habitation of thy righteousness Prosperous. 
So that, that's kind of cold. I don't know if, you, if you've been following us through Job. Job lost all of his kids. They were killed. And the Bible doesn't say they're really doing any reviling or wickedness. They just, they were getting together for having family dinners. Job did offer sacrifices to them unto the Lord. But he's, this Bill dead, he's kind of saying, it's kind of your fault that your kids didn't turn out good. Number one, it's not whether the kids turned out good or not. That's not even the issue. They're dead. And the same thing he's saying to the kids. If they would have interceded to the Lord, then they wouldn't have been killed. He's given some, we got about, uh, we have a triple entendre here. He's saying a lot of weird things that he's not even in the situation. He doesn't know them. He didn't know the kids. He is a distant friend. Only a person really knows what's in their own heart. And you can't, it's very, you can't really judge a situation when somebody's been killed or so forth. Then judging Job, but they didn't turn out good. Samuel was one of the greatest men on earth, and yet he had kids that were rotten. They were rotten torn tomatoes. They were, they were rotten. Noah, one of the greatest men on earth, yet he had, he had a rotten kid. Yep, Bill dead. Gives out some false prophesy here to kind of twist things and make the truth hard to understand. And that's kind of what the false prophets do. They say things that are, sound good, even humanitarian. But they're wrong. Though my beginning was small, yet thy latter end should greatly increase. Basically, he's saying, if you are righteous. For inquire, I pray thee, of the former age, and prepare thyself to the search of their fathers. For we are but of yesterday, and know nothing, because our days upon the earth are a shadow. And that sounds kind of good, because there's a little truth in that. We're, we're like a vapor. You know, 100 years from now, Mr. Bear, I'll, I'll be, you know, with the Lord. My body will be dust, just a vapor, like a, like a shadow in the night. Verse 10, shall not they teach thee and tell thee in utter words out of their heart? Can the rush grow up without the mire? Can the flag grow without water? Whilst it is yet in his greenness and not cut down, it withereth before any other herb. So are the paths of all that forget God, and the hypocrite's hope shall perish. Wow. He said kind of some right things here. But in the end, he said this sour little note, I experience righteousness, but you obviously have not. That's basically what Bill Dad is saying. And you must be a phony. You must be a hypocrite because your kids got killed and you lost all of your wealth. Once again, the false prophet in the church says some truth with a little twist in it. Verse 14, whose hope shall be cut off and whose trust shall be a spider's web? He shall lean upon his house, but it shall not stand. He shall hold it fast, but it shall not endure. We see, we hear the left bringing in refugees from around the world that worship a demon. Where they can have their own laws in our country or you're in the, look at the European countries. And it's their attitude is, they're our brethren, we should love them. Just speak in the United States alone, there are multiple of people every day murdered by illegal immigrants because we've opened the doors. They're not forced to work, they get, they get free welfare, and they just create crime. Rapes, murders, brutal crimes against hardworking, honest citizens. Is that right? No, that's not right. That's not humanitarian. That's wickedness to your own people. But the left says, well, this is good. This is a good thing. The left says, we should allow people to just sit home every day in their inner city apartments and whatever and let the government support them. And they don't have to work. They can just create crime. 
No, no time in history where people are allowed to dwell in a society and not have to work for a living. But the left says that's right. But the Bible says that's wrong. The Bible says if you refuse to work, then you shouldn't eat. See, so the false prophets, they say things that sound good, but there's, that they're wrong. That's what Bildad is doing to Job here. Verse 16, he is green before the sun, and his branch shooteth forth in his garden. His roots are wrapped about the heap, and seeth the place of stones. If he destroy him from his place, then it shall deny him, saying, I have not seen thee. Behold, this is the joy of his way, and out of the earth shall others grow. Behold, God will not cast away a perfect man, neither will he help the evildoers. Sounds good, doesn't it? Except the New Testament says, God brings the sun on the righteous and the evil, and the rain on the same. On the evil and the good. Sometimes the wicked live more years than the righteous man. Sometimes the righteous man dies at a young age. But see, the righteous man, this is just a proving ground. He has all of eternity. The wicked man, this is it. This is all he gets. And then it's the rest of eternity in the lake of fire. So you got to watch out for the false prophets. They say things that sound good, and the left says things that sound good, but they're wrong because it's false. Verse 21, Till he fill thy mouth with laughing and thy lips with rejoicing, they that hate thee shall be clothed with shame, and the dwelling place of the wicked shall come to naught. Well, Bildad has obviously not been to the inner cities of, um, of major American metropolises. And it's not about creed or colors or ethnicity. It's just about laziness. Mankind is given with an emptiness into this world. There's, a, there's, a, there's an absence here that calls out to God. When man says, we know better than God. Bible says, if you don't work, you don't get to eat. Man says, oh, we're better than God. You don't have to work, and we're going to let the middle class workers provide for all your needs while we live well off in the upper ranks. The false prophet says, don't kill the rapist. He needs to be reformed. The Bible says, rape is a capital punishment crime. The left says, there shouldn't be death penalty to the murderer, the child molester. The Bible says, those are capital punishment crimes. Murder, rape, kidnapping, capital punishment crimes, even attempted assassinations. Not just that he committed the assassination. Attempting an assassination is equal and tantamount to an assassination. That is the same is a death penalty crime. But we protect them. The left says, we know we're more compassionate than God. Well, that's a lie. And then they release those people back out on the streets to do it again, to create chaos in society so that you don't really know who to trust. And the judges kick them right back out on the streets to do it again. God's law is right. The false prophets are wrong. Bildad here is wrong. Next time we come back to the book of Job, Job has a response for Bildad, for those around him listening, for the angels in heaven, for Satan to hear, for the demonic angels to hear, for all of us to hear, to learn, to take good counsel, and the man that suffered more than most of us will ever even think of suffering. And yet he came out faithful 
to God. God bless you, friends. See you next time.